Yes, absolutely. Hi, everybody. Hi, so good to be here. Yes, I want to thank um, Mega for inviting me, and I'm so sorry that um, I haven't been able to be here for the fullness of the. Oops, his earring. Let me get. It. Thank you. Just be here with one. Um, be here for the fullness of um, the conversations today, as I've been multitasking um, today, but. Um, one of the things I wanted to say, I want to talk about a couple of things. I want to talk about information equity and, um, you know, to connect the dots between information equity and other um, information issues, especially today um, where, you know, we have normalized uh, disinformation, right? And, um, and we've moved um, uh, along the pathway from you know, misinformation to disinformation, which is intentional misinformation, moved on to um, information segregation, right? Um, which is where some people have um, access to really good information and other people don't, and we normalize and standardize that. And then, of course, information poverty, which is just a state of not having um, information access. And then finally, I would say the most egregious um, information issue of, of, of any time and really the prelude to totalitarianism is information withdrawal, where information that does exist within the public sphere is withdrawn um, because of censorship, or be, and, and especially, you know, today when we think about state-sanctioned um, censorship, because we are in a time, an evolution of our country, where all but four states have introduced legislation um, to censor books or to severely restrict them. So that's something to think about. But I want to put this in in a larger frame, if you will, um, because I have attended a few summits um, in the last couple of weeks. One of the first summit. Um, was a democratic summit that was um, hosted and curated by the Obama Presidential Center. And how many of you were there? Yeah, yeah. And so when um, President Obama addressed the, the crowd, you know, he said something I think is really important just to acknowledge, um, you know, is that even as we have these conversations, um, we are also facing war um, in multiple places, right? And we are um, really having, I think, a very racialized um, conversation about belonging. And even as we have that conversation about who has the right to belong, who has the right um, uh, to, um, to um, a, a home, as well as a homeland, as we have that conversation, we are also um, in an unprecedented moment in this country where um, we have the largest number of people ever who live outside of their homes or traditional territories or nations or states. Um, and that migration um, is, is being forced um, in many cases, as we find more and more people who are economic um, uh, refugees and asylees, as well as political, um, and then also, uh, you know, a great number who are also um, uh, seeking safety, right? And so, one thing that I wanted to kind of um, uh, frame this um, quick conversation um, is also about how do you lead in the in, the, in these times, um, especially when. Um, we are in a place where we consume leaders. Um, we talk about, nobody wants power, but they want to talk about everybody in power. Um, it's very, people don't want to support um, leaders. It, it's almost like the universal, let's talk about the weather. Um, and, uh, and I think what's unfortunate that I'm seeing is that even as our paradigms shift to make traditional notions of how power is wielded untenable, and as the institutions themselves um, segue into trying to being forced into a certain type of accountability in raising or seeking new leaders, the systems won't sustain the leadership because we ourselves, even in this room, are complicit in 
time-consuming leaders. We call out rather than call in. As soon as somebody is placed in power, even, it is, even if it is a person of color, we find ways to denigrate, to talk about. Um, and so I also want to call us out for that. So I, I want to talk about going to seed at the same time that I'm talking about information equity. And the reason why I'm thinking about going to seed is because as I get older, tomorrow I'll be 55 years old. I never thought I would be 55. Um, I still can't believe it. The only consolation is that hip hop is 50. <laughs> and all of the cool cats, you know, who helped to create um, hip hop are my age or older, and it is the people, and we have given an extraordinary inheritance. But l let's make no mistake, hip hop is my generation. And so I, that is my consolation. But I also look at the people, especially people like True Goy the Dove, um, thinking about Dave when he passed um, from. Um, uh, de La Soul. When he passed, I saw something, you know, that I had seen in people like DMX, and I'm just trying to connect the dots between going to seed and this, na this notion of leading in a critical time where our information inequity has moved us to a place where we have state-sanctioned censorship in this country, and we are also seeing heinous disinformation in terms of even entire platforms being taken down in times of war. So what I, what I want to say, and if you can just rock with me, I want to talk about two different things. Um, I want to think about leadership in terms of me becoming, getting to the place of 55 and understanding that, you know, like with the phases of the tree, you know, you're a seed, then a sapling, then you reach a certain type of maturity, then you have that kind of snag where you start to have have like the kind of rot and the tree is, you know, um, beginning to um, decay. And then, you know, if it is lucky, it, at its most generative, it goes to seed again. As I begin to understand my energy that has always been like super high, but as I begin to think having led across multiple platforms in different industries and having enjoyed um, the wind behind my sails as well as my sails being caught, as well at different times, I'm starting to ask myself, especially as someone who I think um, is at this point an information abolitionist, you know, that I believe that information wants to be free. That's my training as an information theorist and librarian, but also that that freedom um, is something that is being decried by leaders. I'm asking myself what my positionality is. And I want us to ask that our, that question of ourselves as well. Those of us who will work in nonprofits as part of the nonprofit industrial complex, why do I call it that? Not just to make a fancy kind of thing, but one thing that I know is that oftentimes the people who run nonprofit organizations are also married to or give birth to the kind of people that are also creating the problems that make the nonprofits run. And I understand the ecosystem, and it's concerning me because we have moved into a place where even our problem solving is performative. And then again, then it pushes then leadership if you are brought in to disrupt, because that is part of the life cycle also too of the tree, it is not going to be sustainable. And do we want to be smoke screens or apologies for these types of systems that um, actually sort of create almost like the kinks in the line in order to propagate themselves? And what I also want is the conversation that I'm having with you to to be uncomfortable. If you can understand what I'm saying at all, my goal is that we will see ourselves in it because no, none of us are absolved. No matter what kind of eyeglasses we wear or funky socks, we are all a part of it. And I just want to also position my own leadership um, as a problem that I have been asking myself at the height of um, censorship, I have decided to deinstitutionalize, to be a free radical in society, to see what happens if I put my own name on the line. And um, as I close, I want to just speak to going to seed. Are we willing to do that? Because we are staying in jobs and positions of leadership too long too long because change is happening very quick and we are staying too long. We are not nurturing. We are not providing cover. Um, we are finding um, tr tr troubling notions 
of competition when it comes to reputation. We are using terms like building a brand as opposed to doing the work. Um, there are things that I think we need to say. What I want to commit to is to go to seed. I've had my time. I'm 55. I may have 55 more years. I may have 10. I might have five. I might have two. My mother passed when she was two years older than me. What is I just don't know. But what I know is that I am no longer the sapling. I am no longer reaching and trying to stretch into maturity. I am who I am. My goal now is to create some snag, is to have some of my leaves fall into fertile ground, is to support other leaders, is to problematize those who will talk about those leaders behind their backs, those who will set them up for failure. I have to do that because our First Amendment right is being questioned. And I believe that if we don't interrupt what's happening, we are going to see not only the dissolution, we are, we are problematizing voting rights in this country. Let's get it straight. We're not, I mean, the premise on which this country is built and what we have fought and died for at various levels in this country, and I mean all of us because all of us have lost some blood. All of us has lost some blood in this country. But what I want to see is I want to I want to see us talk honestly um, about not only censorship and where it stems from, this totalitarian um, bent uh, that is also, I think, in some ways being um, propelled forward by the kind of silence and performativity that's also happening in the nonprofit and human services and especially the educational space. And I also want to challenge challenge all leaders to be organic, to be real. That means have your time, grow, you don't know everything, get to a point of maturity, nurture, and then at your most generative point, go to seed, plant seeds, step back, plant seeds, research, speak without fear of repercussion. Um, and I think that's the beauty of deinstitutionalization. Let me stop here and I thank you. Thank you.